Hi, good evening everybody. I'm Gazelle Shakari. I'm a second year PhD student in computing science and my research focuses on making driving safer. Now, imagine you're in a car and you're driving a, on a 30 mile per hour road. You just notice the traffic lights turn green. You also notice the 30 mile per hour road sign. You notice the pedestrian on the crossing. You notice the cyclist in your rear mirror window. And you notice the work roads ahead. You also notice all the other car drivers using the same road as you are. So when driving a car, you have to stay constantly observing, constantly vigilant, observing everything. So you have to, when driving a car, you have to um, take a lot of information in. And the ones I've just listed are only driving related information. There is an ever increasing amount of non-driving related information, secondary tasks as we call them. For example, volume adjustment, seat adjustment, parking assistance, sat nav driving assistance, texts um, and temperature, all these things increase um, the visual working demand of the driver. So, um, so there is an ever-increasing um, amount of sophisticated features on the sensor of, a car, of nearly all car dashboards, um, competing for the driver's um, attention when driving. Um, so, um, for example, if I press a button to uh, change the temperature, for example, I cannot, take my, I cannot keep my eyes on the roads and um, thus reduce safety during driving. Further, I also, when pushing a button, I shift my body out of the natural driving position, decreasing my ability to maneuver the car in a um, risky situation. Um, so this, uh, so one, how does one design a car infotainment system that does not increase visual demand, that basically minimizes visual demand from the in-car system and does not shift the body out of the natural driving position by just trying to touch any of the buttons on the center console. The answer is actually pretty simple. I've been doing it throughout my entire talk. Um, I've been able to direct and control your imagination, and it did not require me or any of you any mental demand, or it did also not require me to take my eyes off the audience. How did I do it? Hand gestures. Um, so you can, in a car, you can use hand gestures to interact with the system. Now, imagine a hand gesture you have seen in a car or have made yourself. I am probably not talking about that hand gesture. <laughs> so, what I am actually talking about is a simple swipe, for example, to reject an incoming phone call. It would just go... <laughs> exactly. Or... <laughs> My, my AI is working hard, um, as you can tell, my recognition system. Um, or, for example, a circular motion to increase the volume while I'm talking and decrease the vol volume so I'm not too loud, exactly. And, or, for example, a two-finger gesture to turn off the lights so it does not distract you while driving. And on. Exactly! <laughs> so, um, um, so uh, these, these gestures are actually really good for you because they do not require you, because when you gesture, you just know what your arm is doing, right? You just feel it in the air, in the space. You know what your fingers are doing. So it does not require you any visual attention or mental demand while it's doing it. And then also, with a flick in air, you can just uh, swipe to the next song or reject a phone call, meaning it does... Um, you, does not, you do not shift your body out of the natural driving position to push a button or anything. So technically, minimized eyes of the road time and body is still in the natural driving position, problem solved. Ha! Research over. No, <laughs> actually not. So this is where I come in. Um, it has been shown that hand gesture, against contrary to intuition, hand gestures do not minimize visual attention. If I do this gesture to increase the temperature in a car, I still end up looking at the center console to get confirmation if my gesture was recognized and executed correctly. Um, in current systems, in BMW and Hyundai cars, for example, um, the feedback I would receive for increasing the temperature in a car would be displayed on the center console on the little touch display screen. Um, this is absolutely against the idea of having hand gestures in a car. If I have a, a visual free interaction, but provide visual feedback for the interaction, I'm absolutely not taking advantage of the visual free interaction. So this is how do you 
design then. So basically what you need is an eyes-free feedback that I can perceive whilst gesturing in air. And this is where I come in. I am looking into non-visual feedback for in-car gesture interaction. So my first hunch was to create a um, feedback, a hand gesture feedback that is presented on the steering wheel via a dynamically, surfaced, uh, dynamically changing surface on the steering wheel. Meaning, imagine you have a steering wheel and the surface, a little wave, goes along the surface. So while I'm doing the circular gesture, you would feel a little wave going over your palm and you know that the system recognizes your gesture. And you do this without any um, eyes of the road time. My second um, idea, oh, <laughs> gesture misclassification. <laughs> so um, my second idea was to use ultrasound feedback, um, which is ultrasound waves, which can create, believe it or not, perceivable shapes and textures in midair via vibration. So ultrasound waves will create vibration in air and you can feel them. So, and since you can only feel them and not see them, you're not inclined to look at it because you just can't see anything. So whilst I'm, for example, again, doing the circular motion, I could feel, for example, the texture of the air changing. For example, if I increase the temperature, the texture of the air might get smoother and softer and more liquid because it is getting hotter. If I decrease the temperature, the texture could get rougher and stiffer, and it would take me a bit longer to decrease the temperature. My third idea was to um, implement a um, LED strip in the car. So it has been shown that providing feedback to the visual periphery, no, peripheral vision, <laughs> um, is, um, re uh, results in really fast um, perception because we humans are trimmed to perceive things in our visual perifer uh, peripheral vision um, for example, if a tiger attacks me, I better react real quick if I see it in my periphery. And the same goes for um, ambient feedback in cars. Now imagine I'm driving in a car and there is a strip between the steering wheel and the instrument cluster, a strip of LED lights going between the uh, my, my steering wheel and the instrument cluster. And if I swipe, for example, the lights would go um, blue. If I swipe it back, <laughs> the lights would go normal again, exactly. So, and this information I can't perceive in my periphery without having to take my eyes off the road. So, now that I'm at the end of my second year, in my third year I will keep on investigating non-visual feedback for hand gesture interaction. And it is actually looking really good because not only do the feedback types I have investigated reduce eyes of the road time, they also do not increase mental demand while driving and are way more preferred by users because they just feel it's not increasing their eyes of the road time. So it looks like that non-visual feedback for hand gestures in cars can reduce crash or near crash accidents in cars when, inter when um, interacting with the infotainment system in a car. So, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>